This channel is provided for informational purposes only. Contact your physician for any diagnostic or treatment plan. Press the like symbol if you enjoyed any part of this video. Thank Good you. Good day. Welcome back to Mike's Diabetes World. We're to take a look at blood sugars. Today, I'm starting off at 8.5. We try to come down a bit, and that's probably the better way. Looking at things, so now, well, I'm eight point five. We'll just leave it at that. Timing range, ninety-two percent, which is great. Above is only 6%, and below is, below 3.9 is 2%. For those of you who use the American system, my blood sugar is at 7.3. That's the metric. If you want to know what my blood sugar is in... A system you understand times that number by 18 and if we do that now my blood sugar will come out to 131.4 I'm at 131.4 a pretty good number that was a super number, but it's coming down a bit. Now, today I want to discuss something that doesn't only affect type 1 diabetics. It affects everyone. And that is what to do when your doctor retires could be your GP, could be your eye doctor. I've had this happen three times in my life. One, my GP resigned and he pretty well said, I'm resigning, that's it. I had my endocrinologist. Well, I don't know if you classify her as resigned or more that she went off to teach. I understand she's practicing a bit now, which is good. But when she resigned, from having patients, she put me on to a new endocrinologist, and I pretty well was accepted. To get doctors nowadays, you have to go and you have to make sure that you meet their criteria and whether they'll accept you and I remember going through this with my mother. And my mother had to go for an interview. She was reaching the more elderly age. But I, and at any point the doctor could say, you know, I don't think this is gonna work or whatever. So, but she ended up with one of the best family doctors I have seen in my life. I was happy with my GP, but if I didn't have the GP, I would have jumped right over to his care. We're lucky. You have to be very particular. But now, in Canada, 
And around the world, I guess, there's less and less doctors out there. In BC, a physician, ass not assistants, what are they called? Yeah, physician assistants or nurse practitioners aren't really utilized that much. So it's the workload. But if your doctor is retiring, or leaving or moving what you need to do is get an appointment with your doctor and go over everything don't sort of say oh okay that's it you need to make sure your insulins are correct um, any other medical conditions Second of all, ask them, well, who do you really suggest? Or is there someone taking over in the practice? <clears throat> I've had people stop the practice, break it all down. And I've had them do that and say, well, you're on your own. I don't know. And that, in fact, happened to my mother, who, in turn, we found the new doctor, who was awesome. Now, because I'm in long-term care, I get the care that I need from a doctor. And this is important. But if you're out there and living on your own and you're without a doctor and you have type 1 or even any kind of diabetes, you need to track down care. I went without having an endocrinologist for years. Unfortunately, that was the biggest mistake I ever made. I was being taken care of at first by my GP. And he never said, oh, you should go to an endocrinologist. I had my first endocrinologist in the hospital when I was diagnosed. Didn't see him after. He wasn't interested. I really wouldn't have wanted to go see him. I didn't see an endocrinologist until around 1984. And I just happened to be in North Vancouver, got on to a diabetic doctor through my then GP, and everything was great. He got me on diabetic education. He was the one who got me on my first pump. Though, granted, it's a lot different than what I have now, but it was a pump. I enjoyed having an endo. And then, I think he was, he was a, maybe 70. He was really starting to show his age, so... I was transferred to a different one. I did not like this endo. But looking back on it now, he was probably the best endocrinologist. I was the stupid idiot. 
and we moved out and it went a couple of months and uh, I got sick and I said you know what let's we had moved in between two hospitals I said let's try Boyle Columbia I went there and got in touch with an endo through there and I have had an endocrinologist since and the issues I have dealt with with my type 1 diabetes my complications I couldn't have done it without an endo to this day I still have an endo I do now with the invention of media I do an awful lot through phone calls through televisits so if your doctor retires get an appointment go over all your current conditions see if you can get a file see if there's someone taking over the practice See if they, if not, see if there's someone who they recommend. Don't rest till you get a doctor. You can also, I know in British Columbia, it's called the BC College of Physicians and Surgeons. You could go on there and take a look for a GP. You can't go to a endocrine, sorry, or a specialist or an endocrinologist until you're referred in BC. I don't know how that is in the rest of Canada or into other countries. But don't be as stupid as I did. You need, especially if you're having issues, you need to have a GP, an endocrinologist. Don't wait till what I did, ending up in emergency. And with that, have a super day, and we'll talk again soon. If Bye. you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thank you. My email is mikesdiabetesworld at gmail.com. Mikesdiabetesworld at gmail.com. <laughs>